Major breaking news out of the United States Supreme Court tonight. Justice Amy Coney Barrett has issued an order in a quote-unquote assault weapon and large capacity magazine ban case out of Illinois. Let's talk about what this means for our right to bear arms and whether or not this means the Supreme Court is about to act on those issues. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box, a Donner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the new Second Amendment book, Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Can Teach Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. We're going to talk a lot about that book. You can buy it both in Kindle and on paperback, by the way, on Amazon. Okay, folks, breaking news. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett has just entered an order in a case that was seeking an emergency appeal an emergency application for a stay in joining the city of Naperville's law in the state of Illinois. They have a law that bans so-called assault weapons, which are, of course, nothing more than semi-automatic rifles owned by tens of millions of Americans, and so-called large-capacity magazines, which, as you know, are really nothing more than standard-capacity magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. There is an, a, a request for the United States Supreme Court to step in and to enjoin the enforcement of this law pending the appeal to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals based in Chicago. The name of this case is the National Association for Gun Rights against the city of Naperville, Illinois. This is a case where the, the, the federal district court judge in Chicago rejected the entry of an injunction uh, thereby allowing the city's clearly unconstitutional ban on semi-automatic rifles and on large capacity magazines. We won't get into the technical details of that law, but the bottom line is the federal district court judge there screwed up, in my opinion, applied the wrong standard, and refused to find that these laws violated the Second Amendment. There's an immediate appeal taken by uh, the National Association for Gun Rights, to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals based in Chicago. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals also refused to enjoin the lower court law. The organization then sought an emergency application to Justice Amy Coney Barrett on the United States Supreme Court. Her responsibility is to oversee these kinds of emergency applications for an injunction of the local law because she oversees the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals where she was a judge before she became a Supreme Court Justice. Now, just uh, a few hours ago, the uh, Amy Coney Barrett issued what is called, quote, a response to application requested by Justice Barrett is due by the defendants, that's by the city of Naperville and the other defendants who are being sued over this, what I view to be an unconstitutional law, it is due on May 8th by noon. Now, this is significant because most of the time when a Supreme Court justice handling one of these emergency requests for a stay or emergency requests for an injunction, usually the Supreme Court justice overseeing that district or that circuit just denies it out of hand as we're not getting involved. However, in this case, the fact that Justice Amy Coney Barrett felt the need and obviously is interested in what happened down below, she's directed the defendants, now on appeal they're called respondents, by the way, but she has directed the defendants, the government defendants, to explain why they think these laws do not, I repeat, do not violate the Second Amendment. This is quite significant because this is telling us that Justice Barrett believes that whatever happened down below involving the district court or the trial judge concluding that the local laws did not violate the Second Amendment, this has piqued Justice Barrett's interest. I want to read to you the question presented by the plaintiffs in this case as presented to Supreme Court Justice Barrett. They're asking the court to decide the following question presented. Quote, can the government ban the sale, purchase, and possession of certain semi-automatic firearms 
and firearm magazines, tens of millions of which are possessed by law-abiding Americans for lawful purposes when there is no analogous historical ban as required by D.C. versus Heller and NYSERPA versus Bruin. Now, the truth is, you don't even need to get into the analogs or historical analogs because the only test that applies to a quote-unquote arms ban case is the Heller decision, which is simply whether or not a arm, in this case semi-automatic firearms, semi-automatic rifles, and magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, all of which are clearly arms, whether or not they're in common use by Americans for lawful purposes, there is no dispute at the end of the day that these are in common use by Americans for lawful purposes. There's attempts by the anti-gunners to try to redefine the standard, redefine the argument in some way. At the end of the day, it's not going to work. Now, it's clear that Justice Barrett is very interested in this because otherwise she would not have asked the government to explain themselves. Now, with all this said, I want to be honest with you. It is highly unlikely despite all of this, that the U.S. Supreme Court is going to step in and enjoin the city of Naperville's law. And I think that's the case for multiple reasons. One of the main reasons why I think the Supreme Court is not going to get involved just yet is because it's a little premature for it to do so, that the case involving the city of Naperville here um, has not reached a final verdict, a final judgment yet. I mean, it's like an interlocutory appeal on a motion for preliminary injunction. So the court doesn't, the Supreme Court doesn't like to get involved in those kinds of cases. The other thing is keep in mind that District Court Judge Stephen McGlynn in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Illinois, we've talked about this uh, a couple days ago, has already entered an injunction in joining the Illinois laws dealing with so-called assault weapon ban, assault weapons and so-called magazine bans. Uh, he's enjoined that state law as being unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. Now, as to whether or not that technically applies to the city of Naperville case, uh, probably it technically does not. Nevertheless, I could see the Supreme Court saying, well, geez, you already have an injunction statewide from you know this District Court uh, Stephen McGlynn, and uh, that is going to be going to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. So I think what's going to happen here is Ju Justice Barrett and the Supreme Court is going to Look at what the defendant says on May 8th when they submit their papers. They're going to give it a few days, and they're also going to be watching what happens in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals with what is expected to be an emergency appeal seeking to stay the decision of Judge McGlynn. So I think at the end of the day, um, I think the Supreme Court is not going to be in a position to actually enjoin the city of Naperville's laws just yet, but I could see a statement made by the Supreme Court suggesting that perhaps Heller should be applied uh, coherently or something like that. I could see a quick statement reminding the lower courts to follow the Second Amendment, something like that. That might occur as a reminder. We saw that, for example, in the Antonyuk case in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals out of New York, where even though Justice Sotomayor and the Supreme Court refused to reinstate the injunction statewide of many of those uh, crazy laws enacted by the state of New York after Bruin. Nevertheless, Justice Alito and Justice Thomas issued a joint statement saying, to be clear, they viewed the district court decision in New York in the Anton Young case in favor of the Second Amendment to be thoroughly reasoned, well-reasoned, or articulately set forth, and therefore they're saying, well, you know, if you, things don't go well in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, you come on back to the Supreme Court and we'll reconsider this that was like a signal, I thought. I could see a similar statement coming out of the Supreme Court involving this case, uh, which is before Justice Barrett right now. But again, I think at the end of the day, it's unlikely the Supreme Court will step up and enjoin the city of Naperville's law. But I do think that there's already indication here that the Supreme Court is concerned that the Second Amendment is not being respected in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And the fact that she's looking for briefing already is a sign and a signal to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals that they better not screw this up or they will be spanked if they don't respect and honor the Second Amendment as articulate and set forth by the United States Supreme Court in both Heller and Nicerpa versus Bruin. Okay, so we will follow the story. There'll be a lot of talking about it, but bottom line is I'm really probably right on all this stuff. 
Uh, but again, let's just see what happens when the defendants submit their brief on May 8th by noon, DC time, and then we'll see what they have to say, and then we'll see what Justice Barrett and the rest of the Supreme Court does uh, thereafter. So, okay, folks, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner channel, please do so, and uh, we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Order's up. Table 2A.